Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys 10 really important account goals to accomplish before you get into some high level PVM or bossing. So if you are able to complete all 10 of these account goals, you should be able to do almost every boss in RuneScape 3 efficiently. So now we're just going to jump right into the video. So starting off with the first account goal, it is going to be having at least 85 plus combat stats. So these stats include attack, strength, defense, ranged, and magic. Of course, if you have all of these, your constitution level will also be pretty high. Um, and having base 85 combat stats is really important to have before fighting bosses in RuneScape 3. And it's because higher stats means you'll get more damage per second. So you'll be able to deal more damage and this will in turn reduce your kill times at the boss. Also, having 85 combat stats will allow you to use better gear, which we will discuss later on in this video. There are many amazing ways to train combat in RuneScape 3, so this really shouldn't be a problem to get. Some of the more notable ways of training combat, um, they do include Elite Dungeon 3 Trash Mob Runs. This is one of the better ways to train combat, and you make money doing this as well. Um, and then there's also training the Abyss, um, and then there's Abyssal Demons, there's a bunch of really good um, combat training methods that you can do and I will include a few guides to a few of these methods in the description down below if you want to check some of these out. Now the next account goal that is essential for so many bosses is having at least 43 prayer. So this is obviously for the three protection prayers and protection prayers are extremely useful on nearly every boss in RuneScape 3. Also, it's super useful for Slayer and basically all PVM. So having these spells unlocked is a must before you go and try out your first boss kill. 43 Prayer is also a pretty easy accomplishment for most players. You can even use the Corruption minigame in the Lumbridge Swamp if you are an Iron Man. If you are a main account, you can buy bones off of the Grand Exchange and then use them on Gilded Altars in someone's player-owned house for amazing XP. It may cost you a bit to get your prayer up to this level, but trust me, it is definitely worth it. So moving on to number three, we're going to be talking about Beast of Burdens. So the next goal you should strive for is at least 52 summoning. And at level 52 summoning, you will unlock a Spirit Terror Bird, and this will allow you to hold an extra 12 items. If you do happen to get your summoning level up to level 67, you will unlock the War Tortoise, which is significantly better, giving you 18 extra item slots. And lastly, if you can get 96 summoning, you get the Pack Yak with 30 extra slots. So Beast of Burdens, they are super helpful in almost every PVM situation. It will allow you to carry extra food and supplies, which will in turn allow you to stay at a boss longer. And this will increase your kills per hour and of course your GP per hour. Also, if you are planning on fighting tougher bosses like Araxi, a pack yak is highly recommended for players learning the boss. So next we're going to talk about good gear setups, specifically at least tier 80 plus gear. So eventually you will want to have a solid gear setup for each of your three combat styles, but if you're just looking to start off with PVM, I would suggest focusing on one combat style first. We are going to be looking at armor only in this section, although do remember that if you are going to be upgrading your gear, make sure you upgrade your weapon first before buying better armor because the weapon is most important. So choosing your preferred gear setup is a pretty big decision. There are so many options, so I would first suggest that you pick a combat style. Um, I am going to be going through each of the three combat styles and the gear you can get. If you want to skip to a specific combat style, I will link timestamps in the description down below. So first, let's look at melee. So even though tier 80 gear is recommended for most bosses, you can downgrade to tier 75. You should be able to get by on most lower level bosses. Um, and at tier 75, you can buy Bandos. As you can see, it's very cheap at 5 mil for the full set. And also it doesn't degrade. Um, and then looking at Anima Core, this is a tier 80 gear. It costs 80 mil to buy. And as you can see, the bonuses are a lot better. You can see that the defense bonus is actually higher without the boots and gloves with Anima Core. 
um, and then the style bonus is just a little bit behind so anima core is a better option although it does cost 80 mil what I would suggest is actually saving up your money and getting level 90 defense that way you can go ahead and buy masterwork armor this is the best melee gear in the game and as you can see it costs around 60 mil to buy and the stat and the stat boosts are incredible you should be able to kill basically any boss with this gear setup um, also it does depend on a few other things but this is literally the best gear you can buy for melee so if you are looking to do melee when going into bossing I would definitely suggest trying to get to level 90 before buying a good melee gear so next we're gonna look at the ranged combat style so as I said before I did recommend tier 80 gear but you can actually downgrade to tier 75 using armadillo it is a lot worse, although it is a lot cheaper as well. It's only 16 mil for the full set. Anima Core for ranged gear is actually not that expensive, um, especially when you compare it to the melee set and the mage set of Anima Core. Um, it only costs around 30 mil to buy the three key pieces. Then you can also use some armadillo gloves and boots, or maybe you would even want to buy Pernix gloves and Pernix boots, which would make the total set a little bit over 40 mil. And then at level 90, you can buy Serenic. Now, this does cost 43 mil, and the only downside about Serenic is that it does degrade to dust. So do keep that in mind. It is a really great armor to use for bossing. Um, and the armor does last quite a while, but once it degrades, it's gone forever. Usually, once the armor is degraded to dust, you should have made at least like 500 mil if you are bossing with this armor. Personally, I actually have both Anima Core of Zamorak and Serenic. Um, I use Serenic only for the high level bosses, so if you are someone just looking to get into some normal bosses, like maybe QBD, you could even do bosses in God Wars Dungeon 2, maybe even Rax. Um, you can go with Anima Core, it is some pretty good gear, I mean, you should be able to get by with just that. Now, moving on to the Mage Armor. Again, you can go with the tier 75 subjugation. It costs 10 mil, and the stats are quite a bit worse than the other two alternatives. There's Anima Core, which is tier 80 armor. It costs 56 mil, so it isn't super pricey, but it is still pretty pricey. And then there is Tectonic Armor at tier 90. This costs 90 mil to buy. So it is very expensive, and again, it does degrade to dust. Magic is usually the preferred combat style for a lot of high-end PVM and bossing, so that is why this armor is significantly more than its counterparts. Um, personally, I actually have uh, Subjugation and Virtus. Virtus is another really great option to choose. It costs around 70 mil, and these stat bonuses are pretty good and can be viable for some high-level PVM and bossing. So this is a pretty good gear setup as well. Um, and as I said at the beginning of the segment, just choose whichever combat style you are preferred in and then just choose your armor depending on your account. So maybe you don't have so much money, so go with the tier 75 for now. You can always sell it back. And same with all of the other armor, except the tier 90s as they do degrade to dust. So next we're going to look at some weapons and I would suggest at least tier 85 plus weapons for most bosses. It will make the bossing experience just much easier to do. So we are going to be breaking down this section into the three different combat styles as well. And again timestamps for that will be in the description down below. So we are going to start off with melee. So there is three really good options for you guys. Tier 75 you can go with the Dragon Rider Lance. It costs 33 mil, but this is a really good item to buy. It's useful in a lot of PVM scenarios. And then there's also the Noxious Scythe at a tier 90 two-handed weapon, and it costs 180 mil, so it is quite a bit more expensive. If you don't have the money to spare, just go with the Dragon Rider Lance because it is pretty good as well. And then there's the tier 90 Drygors. These are dual-wield weapons. And they do cost around 45 to 65 mil, depending on which ones you are getting. Now, it is important to know in this section that certain bosses do sort of require either two-hand weapons or dual-wield weapons. For example, if you are going to be killing the Twin Furies, 
Two-hand weapons are highly recommended there. If you're killing a boss like Vindicta, dual wield weapons are actually preferred there because you'll get higher DPS using those. So definitely check out which boss you're looking to kill and that will give you a better sense of if you should get a two-handed weapon or a dual wield weapon. And so next we're going to look at ranged weapons. First is tier 85 Shadow Glaives. So these are actually some really good weapons. I actually rocked these for a while and I did a lot of QBDs kills with them and it, they were really efficient. So they only cost 18 mil and they are tier 85 so they have that tier 90 accuracy and tier 80 damage and they really are a really great weapon. At tier 90 you can go with the Noxious Longbow. These cost 150 mil so it is very expensive but it is a tier 90 weapon and it is really great. Also at tier 90 you can get the dual wield ascension crossbows. They are extremely expensive at 215 mil. Crossbows usually give more DPS when using ranged because of the back criminal bolts and their special effects. So that is why the ascension crossbows are higher. You'll be able to get more DPS out of them. But they do cost a lot of money. So just pick and choose whichever one you have the money for. Probably the Shadow Glaives since they are pretty inexpensive um, and also they do work really well. And so for the magic weapons you can go with the tier 85 Cyber Elders gear so you can use the staff and also the orb and this only costs 18 mil and they are dual wield weapons. Personally I have never tried these weapons but I'm sure they are pretty good since all the other God Wars Dungeon 2 uh, weapons, they are also pretty good. Also, the Noxious Staff, this is what I use. It is a tier 90 and it costs 150 mil, so it is really expensive, um, but definitely works really well. Also, the Seismic Wands, this is a tier 70 dual wield weapon. They cost 250 mil for the Seismic Wand and Orb together. And so at number 6, the next best thing to get is Overload. So this does require 96 Herb Lore. It can actually be boosted from 94. So you can go for that and then just boost 96 to make Overloads. Overloads are an untradeable potion and they do boost your stats. If you don't have this, you can use the Super War Master potions. Although it isn't a static boost. So what that means is... Bosses can still decrease your stats, but if you are using overloads, they can't actually decrease them, which makes them really great for some bosses in particular. So overloads, they aren't completely necessary for all bosses, but depending on which ones you are planning on doing, it definitely would be super helpful, and it is helpful in basically all PVM situations. So it is something you should at least try and go for, but if you're killing a boss like QBD, maybe... God Wars Dungeon 1, maybe God Wars Dungeon 2, you could get away without overloads. Now moving on to number 7 on this list, we have Curses, which do require 95 Prayer. So Prayer is a pretty expensive skill to train, usually it costs around 30 to 40 mil just to get to 95 Prayer, which is a lot of money, but trust me, Curses, they are definitely worth it. Curses also have a few quest requirements as well. You do need to have the Temple at Senestian's quest completed, which does have a ton of prerequisite quests. So make sure you have that done as well if you're going to be going for curses. But trust me, they are definitely worth it, especially with the use of soul splits. And then you have things like turmoil, anguish, and torment. These are all super useful curses to use in basically any PVM situation. So it's something you should eventually go for when building your accounts. Again, it isn't super necessary for those lower level bosses, but it will be necessary in high level bossing. Another super useful thing to unlock before going into bossing is invention. So invention allows you to put a bunch of really useful perks on your weapons, and these perks can really come in handy when fighting bosses. They can actually increase your DPS by a significant amount. I will be linking a full guide going over all of the invention perks. So in that guide you can find the section on the combat invention perks and you'll see that there are a ton of really useful ones that will obviously come in handy when you are fighting bosses. Skills like Precise, Aftershock, Biting, 
And there's also Dragon Slayer and the Undead Slayer perk, which do come in handy in certain bosses. There are just a ton of invention perks to go over, so you can check out that video if you want to know more. Another really important account goal to accomplish is unlocking all of the new abilities. So the main abilities that you will really want to unlock is Death Swiftness and Sunshine if you are going to be using either ranged or magic. And these two are unlocked by completing the World Wakes quest. They are ultimate abilities and you will want to use them as often as possible so they are super useful. And then also there's a few abilities unlocked by the Mazcab Ability Codex. Um, Onslaught is one of them and it is super useful if you are fighting Nex. And then also Corruption Shot and Corruption Blast. These are really useful bleeds for both ranged and magic. Now Devotion is another unlocked ability. And you get this from a God Wars 1 boss drop which is actually a fairly common drop to get. And then also there is Salt the Wound and Bladed Dive, both of which are purchased in the Shattered Worlds Reward Shop for 63 million Shattered Anima. These are both really useful abilities. Salt the Wound is really great if you are using a two-handed ranged weapon. And then Bladed Dive is useful if you are using dual wield weapons. So depending on what combat style you are planning on using, you can pick and choose which abilities you will want, although you will want all these abilities eventually, so it is just a general account goal that you will want to have it completed at some point. Um, so these are all some really good abilities that you should eventually go ahead and get. And moving on to number 10, we have auras. So I do have four auras here that are a pretty good baseline some more is that you should get before just going into bossing so first there is the brawler's aura and the runic accuracy aura and then the sharpshooter aura so all three of these auras increase your accuracy in that combat style by a certain percentage depending on what tier you have if you have the supreme version of these it will boost it by 10 percent and the supreme is the maximum tier so the maximum amount of accuracy you can boost is by 10 percent and the brawler's aura boosts your melee by a certain percentage runic boosts your magic and sharpshooter boosts ranged and you can buy all three of these auras via the loyalty points shop which you should accumulate points in the shop if you just are a member and then also the other aura that I wanted to show you guys is the Vampirism Aura. This is a really good base aura that you should have. It's useful for a lot of bosses. And if you don't have another aura, it works because it just is always useful. What it does, it actually allows you to regain 5% of the damage that you deal. And you can purchase it via Wars Wares, which is in the Wars Retreat. You just want to go to Wars Reward Shop. And you can purchase the Vampirism Aura for 5,000 Marks of War. So you will need to do a bit of bossing before you are able to purchase this aura. But even killing the King Black Dragon, you'll get some uh, Marks of War. So you can do it that way if you want. Or you can just go ahead and boss before you get this aura. And you should be able to get it in no time. So anyway guys, that is it for this video. These are my 10 account goals before you get into some high level PVM and bossing. I really hope you guys did enjoy this video. I think there are a lot of really great tips for you guys. And if you have all of these account goals done, you should be able to do some pretty high level bossing. So anyway guys, I really hope you did enjoy the video and subscribe for more RuneScape 3 content. I'm going to be coming out with a lot in the next little bit. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.